Hi everyone, today we are going to study feasibility study. What is feasibility study? Feasibility study consists of activities which determine the existence of scope of developing an information system to the organization. So basically when we say feasibility study, we consider how feasible a given project would be. Is it feasible to develop this project or not? Are the benefits of developing the project outweighing the cost and time spent? So, uh, in a summary we can say that feasibility study basically finds out where, what is the scope of developing a particular information system to that organization. This study should be done throughout this life cycle. Feasibility study is not just limited to one stage of system development life cycle, but it should be done throughout the life cycle. In a project, at one point of time, it may seem that the project is feasible. During initial stages or during the midst of uh, system development, one may find that it is feasible to develop this project. But after proceeding or after one or two phases, it may seem that the project is infeasible and for that reason only it is said that feasibility study should be done at each and every phase of system development life cycle or software development life cycle and not just at any one stage or not just at the initial stages because there are possibilities that initially the project may seem to be feasible but as we proceed with the project uh, after two or three steps we may find after two or three phases we may find that the project has become infeasible. So, it is necessary to evaluate the feasibility of a project at the earliest possible time. We should begin by evaluating the feasibility of the study at the earliest possible stage at the initial stage itself and continue doing this throughout the life cycle of the system development. Months or years of efforts, huge finances could be saved if an infeasible system is recognized at an earlier stage. Because if we do not uh, identify or recognize if this particular information system or project is going to be feasible or not, then we would be wasting months or years of efforts. We would be wasting so much of time, so much of finances would be wasted. So we can avoid the wastage of the uh, we can avoid the wastage of efforts of months or years. We can avoid the wastage of huge finances if we identify that this particular project is infeasible at the earlier stage itself. In feasibility analysis or in feasibility study, we study the following types of feasibility. There are four major types of feasibility studies which are technical feasibility, operational feasibility, economic feasibility and legal feasibility. Today we are going to study technical feasibility and in the rest of the three upcoming videos we will study operational feasibility, economic feasibility and legal feasibility one by one. So let us start with technical feasibility. Technical feasibility is concerned with the availability of hardware and software required for the development of the system to see compatibility and maturity of the te technology proposed to be used and to see the availability of the required technical manpower to develop the system. So basically technical feasibility as the name suggests checks the feasibility of the technical things. So technically talking we are concerned with two major things what is the hardware and what is the software required for the development of a particular information system. So what we see here is that whether the required hardware and software are available which would be required for the development of the information system. We also check the compatibility and maturity of the technology proposed. How compatible and how mature the proposed technology is for this proposed information system and we also see whether there is availability of required technical manpower to develop the system because we have the required techno uh, technology, the required technology is compatible and mature enough for the project but then if we do not have required technical manpower that means people who are skilled and trained at using this particular technology if we do not have such people then it is not possible to develop the information system. So apart from seeing whether the hardware and software are available whether 
they are compatible and mature enough for the project we also have to see if there is required technical manpower who is trained in using this particular technology now there are basic th basically three issues that are addressed during the technical feasibility study the first issue is that is the proposed technology proven and practical say for example you, uh, you have proposed a certain hardware and software for making this information system but then we also have to find out if it is a proven and practical technology or not at this stage the analyst has to see or identify the proposed technology its maturity and its ability or scope of solving the pre problem once a particular technology has been proposed it is the responsibility of the analyst to check if it is mature enough if it is capable enough and whether it has scope of solving the required problem or not because the whole intent of coming up with a new information system is to solve the particular problem so whether this technology is capable of solving this problem or not if the technology has a large customer base it will be preferable to use as a large customer base already it has in problems that stem from its usage may be less when compared to other technologies which don't have a significant significant customer base so we also have to see if this technology has a large customer base and when i say large customer base that means if this technology is being used by the majority of people or not because if this technology is used by a majority of clients or people then it will be preferable to use this technology because then we are already aware of the pros and cons of the technology and if any problem that arises with the usage of that technology we will be well aware of how to so resolve those problems or those issues so it is preferable that we use a technology that is already being used by a large number of clients or people in that case we can assure that the problems that would stem out from its usage will be less when compared to that technology which is not being used by a large number of people or which is not being used by a significant customer base the second factor or, or the second thing that we consider while studying technical feasibility is that does the firm possess the necessary technology it needs okay now uh, the system analyst has come up in discussion with the uh, it team the system analyst has come up with the proposal for a specific technology but then the next question is that the client or the firm for which this information system is being developed whether do they have the uh, whether they have that necessary technology or not so we have to ensure that the re required technology is practical and available okay the, the particular hardware or software that is proposed may be very good for, uh, for developing that information system but then it has also to be ensured that it is practical enough usable and it is available it is easily available does it have the required hardware and software so does the client have the required hardware and software for example if we are developing the enterprise resource planning software for a particular client which is the erp software and hardware then we need a hardware which can see, support this particular erp software so if our answer is no for either of the questions that means even even if we don't have the erp software and we have the hardware or if we have the erp software and we don't have the hardware so if the answer is no for either of the questions then the possibility of acquiring the technology should be explored because if you do not have either of these two things that is the erp software or the hardware then you the first uh, target should be to acquire that particular technology because it would be required for the development of the information system then the third thing that should be considered that is considered while studying technical feasibility is that availability of technical expertise you have acquired you have found out the scope of that particular uh, technology you have ensured that that particular technology is available with the client if it's not available then you acquire it all that is done but then it is finally the people or the manpower that will be using that technology and if they are not 
trained to use that technology so how will they use it so it is also important to ensure that there is availability of technical expertise that means there are people who are expert in using this technology so in this case software and hardware are available but it is difficult to find skilled manpower now the question here in the third step is not to acquire the required software and hardware it is already available the question is that whether you have skilled manpower or not whether you, ha you have people who are skilled enough to use this technology or not so the company might be for example the company might be equipped with erp software but the existing manpower might not have the expertise in it you have the erp software you have the supporting hardware but you do not have the people who will be using it the users who will be using it on a day daily basis are not trained to use it so that is the concern here so the manpower should be trained in the erp software so the last issue or the last step in studying feasible uh, technical feasibility says that after ensuring the scope and availability of a particular software and hardware technology you have to ensure that the manpower is trained in using that particular uh, using that particular technology as in this case since we are discussing erp as an example so the manpower should be trained in using the erp software so this is all about technical feasibility